Got it. Okay, so to start all over again, <laughs> my, my very brief remarks here. Thank you very much for coming, those of you who are here, and those of you who are not, will um, address you via recording. This is of, of some urgency because we want to be voting in this coming week. And so this is of, of some importance. I think we have a, a rather diminished attendance here because as Clara was pointing out, this is Sunday, not the, the favorite day of the week for uh, uh, many of you here, but those of you who have made it, I'm, I'm glad. We are today during, uh, doing our presentation of candidates. And the candidates who will be presenting are Clara Sarayeva from Portugal, who is our candidate for WCA deputy chair. And uh, she is the first to present. Even though she is running unopposed, it's quite essential because uh, in our operating guidelines, she needs approval of 60% of the member associations of WCA. We also have Jin Suk Choi, from South Korea, who will be uh, running to be a, a WCA organizing committee member. Chen Gang, James, who is from China, who will also be running to be a deputy, uh, 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 an organizing committee member for the WCA. And uh, Kobani Kambala of South Africa, who we haven't yet seen here, but who has agreed to show up. So there may be a, a difficulty getting in line, whatever, I'm not sure. But you will be the candidates and you will be presenting today for all of us here. So, the first person to present... Uh, Gordon, no, Gordon, Gordon, yes. Gordon, yes. perhaps you would also want to mention that you chair the committee that is uh, the election committee, and also okay. mention the members before uh, Clara comes on. Yes, I have chaired the election committee, thank you, Isaac, and the members have been Francesca uh, and also Michelle neither of whom happen to be here right now. But this election committee did see uh, vet the members here and uh, seek out the candidates. And uh, we're very happy with the people who are running because we think you will play a, a very active and good job. But I have chaired this and, and I am now representing that election committee as well as chairing it. Okay, thank you, Isaac. So Clara, go ahead. Okay, so good morning, good afternoon or good night, depending on where you are. My name is Clara Saraiva. I'm a social and cultural anthropologist from Lisbon, Portugal. I'm a senior researcher at the Institute of Social Sciences, University of Lisbon. And um, well, my, my CV is quite long. I'm not going to talk about it. I've been involved uh, with international organizations. I've also uh, been an invited professor at Brown in 2001, 2002, and 2008, uh, and then Berkeley 2013. So I've been I've had many relations with, with the US because I also did my graduate studies there. Uh, right now, I've worked on many international and national projects, research projects. My research interests are mainly the anthropology of religion, ritual, but also heritage and transnationalism. And now, I think that what matters most here for this election is the fact that um, I've been since basically 2009 involved with international organizations that deal with uh, anthropology and the relationship worldwide that anthropologists have. So first I was um, part of the CF board. CF is one of the European uh, anthropological and ethnological associations. It's the International Society for Ethnology and Folklore. And I was in the board from 2009 until 2019, uh, first as member of the board, and then from 2015 to 2019 as vice president. The president was at the time Valdemar Hafstein from Iceland, whom you probably know. And uh, the vice president was Peter Jan Mahri from the University of Amsterdam and the Mertens Institute. Besides being involved with CF, I was the president of the Portuguese Anthropological Association for 10 years from 2000. Uh, 13 to 2023. So I just finished that in March. Uh, Christiana Bach took uh, took over um, because uh, you know it's it's a, a difficult association. We are a very small country, a very small anthropological association. So not a lot of people are willing to work a lot on this association. But things are much better now. I think we've done a lot of work in the past um, 10 years. We did um, 
a transversal study of uh, who the Portuguese anthropologists are, uh, where do they come from, where do they study, and especially which type of jobs they have. Is it related to anthropology or not? How do they feel that anthropology helped them in that endeavor or not? And also, um, that study is, is still going on. I presented it in one of the IUAS congresses in Dubrovnik and then later on in Florianopolis, when we also did our, our um, world uh, survey. But this, this project is still going on. It's been carried on by the Portuguese Association, and we're now uh, following people who entered, uh, well, university, either in the graduation uh, degree or post-grad, and see what they're doing. And we're planning, we are actually following people who entered in 2017 and try to see what they would be doing in 2017, see if they graduated, if they went on to do post-grad, if they got jobs, et cetera, et cetera. Besides that, uh, the Portuguese Anthropological Association has also been fighting very hard for uh, assuring a place of anthropology because in Portugal, as in other countries, we have a problem that anthropology is not recognized as an independent discipline. So it's always for calls, for projects, for posts, for, uh, uh, for channel track positions. We are always under the realm of sociology. So we've been fighting hard to give anthropology that autonomy. And I think we're just about to, to be able to do it after many, many years of, of meetings, fights, letters, etc. And it has to do with the Frascati manual, which some of you will know. It's, uh, it's followed by OCDE. And uh, it's a manual that classifies the social sciences and not only classifies all the sciences. So it's something that has to be adapted to each country in order for our discipline to be acknowledged and have its rightful place. Now, besides APA, as you know, I've been involved with... Um, Besides APA and CF, I've been um, involved, of course, with WCA. I've been in the board for several years now. Um, and also in the past three years since the COVID pandemic started in 2020, I've been organizing the webinars, which took place in uh, 2020 every month. And from 2021 on, they take place every two months. And they've been uh, targeted at issues that interest all the anthropologists all over the world. We've had webinars on racism, on COVID, on human rights, on uh, global editors, on, uh, on, on women and gender, uh, on the relationship between humans and animals. We've basically, you can look at them, they are in the site. As I said, there were WCAA webinars from January, 2023 on, we decided to make them a joint a venture of uh, IUAS and WTA, since we are two uh, associations that are now under the same umbrella, WOW, the World Anthropological Union. So they are now WOW webinars, and uh, the next one actually will be on making anthropology global. It will take place at the end of July. And as I said, I invite you all to look at all the webinars that were recorded and are uh, available at our website. Um, besides that, what do I want to do as deputy chair of uh, WTA? Well, of course, I plan to work directly uh, with the elected uh, chair and with all the members that will be in the committee. And I think one of the main goals will be exactly to make anthropology more visible all over the world and to hopefully counter uh, counteract this this idea that neoliberalism has been having in the past 20 years or less that the social sciences are dispensable and i think that's something that we see all over the place and we have to fight that we have to make anthropology visible and uh make it visible in a way that people understand that it's 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 a really important discipline and i count on everybody all the delegates from the different associations to help us with that Actually, just a few weeks ago, I was at the CF um, Congress in Brno, in the Czech Republic, and I was part of the roundtable that discussed precarity in the social sciences and especially in ethnology and anthropology. And that's another uh, issue that we really need to target because um, there were five presenters at, at the table. I was one of them. And we all spoke about the precarity of anthropology and how young people and also older people, of course, uh, get precarious jobs and how this is unfair compared to other disciplines 
and the fact that some ministers, as for instance, the Minister of, of Culture here in Portugal says that anthropologists can get jobs in enterprises. Uh, well, they, they, I think they lack to see that exactly enterprises will probably hire economists or even biologists, but it's very hard to make nowadays uh, enterprises understand that anthropology and the social sciences are vital for the functioning of society. So I think this is one of the overall goals. And then, of course, we'll have very specific goals like going on with the webinars, carrying on the webinars, but also improving the relationship that all the different WCA associations have with the, with the organizing committee, but also amongst themselves. We need to interact more. We need to have more interactive meetings and we need people to attend those meetings. So that's something I think we really need to work on is to make this global um, efforts really global and have everyone participating. That That's basically my, my goal is to really make WCA more known and uh, the good things that we do, and of course some of the bad things, but we do a lot of good things for anthropology to be known so that everybody feels that they need to be engaged and actively uh, working towards all these goals. This is it basically. I think I've used my eight minutes um, and thank you very much all to, for listening and I'm looking forward to listening to everyone else. Thank you. Okay, I, we have a little bit of time. So questions, does anybody have any questions? I think Dorothy, you're clapping. You have, you want to venture into a question? No, no, it was just approval for what Plato was saying. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to start off with a question, and I approve too, Dorothy. I currently agree with your approval, but um, and, and I, I nominated you, Claire, and I think you'd make a, a great uh, a deputy chair uh, eventually to become chair. But um, a particular question, there have been some issues coming up in the last year or so with how we are to be coordinated with IUAES and so on. Yeah. Do you have any ideas how you'd want to handle that? Well, I think that IUAS is also changing the, the board or some members will change. And I sincerely hope that we'll have a better connection with IUAS. As you know, well, Borden and several people that are there know that we've been working in the organizing committee for many years. I think I've been in the organizing committee first as a member and then as a non-nominated, uh, non-designated member uh, with the task of organizing the webinar. So I think I've been involved for what? seven years, eight years, I, I can't recall anymore. But anyway, I think it's excellent that we finally, a few years ago in Chiba, we finally got to, to organize the wall. So this umbrella uh, organization. And I think that WCA and IOES, as we know, have been running at different paces. So things have not been so smooth, but I sincerely hope, and I will be working towards this. And uh, I hope all the committee agrees with me that we really need to find a common pace so that things really work well. It's just that IOAS and WCA have different structures. For instance, we have uh, the working groups, um, the uh, well, the task forces, sorry, as we call them, IOAS has the commissions and the commissions, as probably some of you know, have also been quite kind of, uh, let me use a, a different word, disentangled. They've been there was no leadership. Some commissions existed, but didn't really exist. And fortunately, I've been attending several of the meetings of the commissions in the past months. Finally, Muggsy um, got a hold of it, and he uh, started organizing these monthly meetings where everyone in the commissions came to the, to the Zoom meetings and started discussing how things should be done as far as uh, organizing websites as far as, as organizing the work that the commissions do. Um, and I think that's good. And, and I think that if we can join the efforts of the IOAS commissions, and there are a lot, with the task forces of, of WCA and have them as working uh, elements and not just things that exist but do nothing, I think that would be good. And, and, and also, for instance, for the webinars, I was discussing that with Subhadra, who is now my chair uh, in organizing the webinars since he's representing IOS. And one of the things is that we really said, you know, the, the IOS commissions have to be more involved in these webinars because uh, it's actually been the WCA that has been organizing everything and we need to have their input, their ideas for webinars, uh, their ideas for 
uh, people to participate in the webinars because we have, that's one of the good things about this international organizations that we have experts on several items, on several uh, issues, on several themes from all over the world. And that's the good thing about WCA and IOES is that we can really have uh, international and worldwide view on, on the issues. Okay, good answer. Um, anybody have any other questions? You no. unmute me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Clara, hi. Yeah. We know, we know each other well. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, let me let me ask you something. Um, in some ways about your other commitments. Uh, one of the things that I sometimes worry about with people taking on leadership positions is that they also have other commitments. And uh, I, I guess I'm, the position you're running for is is sort of the number two person, but but the, the practice of WCAA is and then becomes chair after, in this case, after Gordon, and so uh, can you talk about how you would distribute your time or what your other yeah. commitments are? Well, the, the, the thing is, I'm, I'm hoping to get a lot of my, um, well, let's call it academic progression done in the, in the next two years so that when I become chair, I'll have more free time for this. And uh, yeah, the, the problem is we all, I think we're all in the same boat. I mean, we are all academics, we all work, we all teach, we all do research because that's our job. And all that we do for WCA or for WOW is pro bono, right? So uh, we do all this pro bono work and I'm glad we do it, but it, it's true that we, I'm, I'm being very sincere. None of us can ever run away from their jobs and their duties as, as academics, right? So we just have to find ways to, to, to do this. But I think we all end up doing it. We, we make the time for it. And I will surely also make the time, just like I made the time to take care of the webinars. And I think also something that um, was very positive in WCA was that with Carmen Real, we started having meetings every month. And that really organized both our ideas and our goals. And, and I'm sure we'll go on like this. And that's very good because it makes it, uh, teamwork, which I think is important. Of course, the chair and the deputy chair are important, but every member in the organizing committee is important, I think. And once we are able to, um, you know, to, to, to divide the work or to, to, to share it and in a way that each person has a sort of a, a role, uh, it's, it's much easier. I think it's a, it's a, I think it's a way to, for me, in my opinion, it's a way to run this type of organization. You cannot decide everything on your own. It has to be collegial, and uh, and the duties have to be uh, you know shared, and that's the best way to do it. So that's, I think, what we've been doing in the past years, and I think we can improve that. And improving that will also make make us work better. For instance, I remember in the last meetings that uh, Leah, uh, sorry, Francesca and Lee, I think also and Bella. Uh, decided to organize the the delegates meeting. I think that's an excellent idea. That you know, we have we are a we have a good size in the uh, organizing committee. So if we do have uh, um, you know specific tasks for specific people or two groups divided up in pairs, I think that's excellent. And I think it will help a lot both the chair and the deputy chair. I'm not running away from the duties I'll have, of course, but I think uh, this type of of, of of organization helps a lot when you're in charge. Okay, great. We're going to keep you busy, obviously, as deputy chair, <laughs> but, but that's good to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, we, we now have um, all three people. Chobani, uh, welcome. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you made it. Chobani, I'm sorry Hi. my pronunciation of your name is bad, but good to see you. That's fine. <laughs> good to see you. Yeah. Good. And, and so now, I think I'm just going to follow alphabetical order for our three candidates for the organizing committee. We have Jin Suk Choi. Uh, and uh, from South Korea, Shen Gang from China, and Chobani Kambala from South Africa. And Jin Suk, I know you have a couple of teenage uh, kids uh, running after you, so I'll let you go first so you can escape if you need to, given your responsibilities. Speak up, introduce yourself if you could. Um, I, I should okay. say, though, briefly that you are editor in chief of Korean, South Anthro uh, Korean Cultural Anthropology, the journal, and the current vice president of the Korean Society for Cultural Anthropology. So you've been deeply involved in the organization 
over quite a long time. Speak for yourself then. Okay, thank you so much. Well, uh, speaking of the teenagers, don't worry about it. I abandoned them somewhere, so <laughs> no worries. <laughs> um, but, and then I apologize that you know I just made it so complicated. And then because of me, uh, we got we got to do it on Sunday. So sorry for that as well. But I'm so glad that everyone made it, and then I'm uh, happy that uh, you made this opportunity. Uh, so, I mean, um, um, hi, my name is Jin Suk Choi, and then as uh, Gordon mentioned, a couple of things that I'm uh, currently involved in, uh, Korean Society for Culture and Anthropology, I uh, was editing manager and then uh, editor-in-chief in, uh, of Korean Culture and Anthropology and currently vice president. And as all of you probably are, um, I think once you get involved in, um, you know, academic society, you kind of continue, right? And for some reason, like those who are working, keep working, right? So, <laughs> but I think uh, I like it, right? Because I think I'm, you know, kind of uh uh, making a change if possible, and then uh, and then also make an, a Korean anthropology sustainable, if I could. So I mean that is what I'm trying to do. So I think instead of just trying to introduce myself, a lot of things maybe I should just go ahead uh, to talk about you know um, statement of intent. So I think that's where I should go. But then before I start, uh, thank you again to, for giving me this opportunity. And I'm very honored to be nominated. And, and also, I, 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 to be honest, I'm not quite familiar with a lot of things that WCAA does. And I think, uh, you know, I got to know something uh, thanks to Gordon, and he's the one who brought me to be involved in some, you know, webinar and also um you know the the journal um so so that I, I can feel that well actually what I do can be connected to uh world uh, anthropologists um you know who are working very hard to uh you know make the anthropology more global and more connected to each other so I think I would like to part of that as well so let me just uh go ahead uh to you know talk about my statement of intent um, as a Korean anthropologist with global experience uh, trained in the U.S. with fieldwork experience in Guatemala and then currently in Korea, so I was just all over the places, all over the world, and I believe I can bring valuable, um, you know, perspectives and also East Asian representation to WCAA. And I had several executive positions uh, in the Korean culture, uh, Korean Society for Culture and Anthropology, as I mentioned. And I'm eager to foster connections among different parts of the world. As a member of the organizing committee in the WCAA, I would like to, to contribute to uh, critical conversations and to promote greater inclusivity and collaboration within the field of anthropology. Because anthropology is huge. You know, there are so many subfields and uh, people are doing all kinds of things. But then once you meet at a conference, you know that uh, we are actually uh, thinking about something in common. I think we should actually uh, try to make more opportunities uh, to make people uh, more connected. So as you already know, anthropology is fundamentally a global endeavor, yet the discipline has historically been dominated by uh, Anglo-American um, you know, societies. And then probably, you know, that is where I learned and then I still enjoy, but I think we need some different uh, perspectives and different uh, people from all over the world and then probably that'll make anthropology better as well. So if I'm elected to serve on the WCAA organizing, organizing committee, my primary objectives will be to utilize the opportunities afforded by the pandemic induced shift to online communication and to foster global collaboration among anthropologists in different parts of the world, as the previous uh, organizing committee members and deputies have done um, like last year and then, and then previous years. Recognizing the importance of upholding the traditions of anthropological methods and principles, I will also promote discussions on the rapidly evolving technological landscape, which includes, as you know, the emergence of generative AI. 
And I think a lot of confused, you know, of confusions and discussions are going on. But I think in order to include um, young generations and, and yet uh, not losing, you know, what was important in anthropology, I think we should really uh, talk about what is going on. Furthermore, I will emphasize the critical role anthropologists play in addressing um, pressing global challenges such as climate change and in amplifying diverse voices for the general public. I'm committed to fostering uh, a broader understanding of human cultures, societies, and interactions with the environment through anthropological perspectives. By making opportunities of discussions and encouraging interdisciplinary solutions to global problems, like as I mentioned, the issues like climate change and inequities and technology issues, I aim to make a meaningful impact during my term in office. Furthermore, it'll be a great opportunity for me to expand my um, you know, uh, limited experiences uh, by interacting with the scholars in the world who are working hard to make anthropology more visible and more significant uh, to solve many uh, problems. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, thank you, thank you. Questions? Okay, well, just a brief comment before someone asks. Um, uh, for all three of you who are running, uh, I'm, I'm really happy that all three of you from all I know are really active. So only two of you are going to win the election, but I'm hoping that all three of you will be involved in WCA because we have a lot of things for people to do. So it's really important. I'm really happy about the geographical diversity that all three of you represent. So there's going to be a place for you. There's always lots of work to do. And the key, of course, is how hard people can work. Okay, Virginia. Right. Yeah. Uh, hi, Joe. Hi. Um, do you think it's, um, I don't know, it's an asset, a problem, or something else that uh, you, I think actually several people have been trained in the US? Um, does that, I mean, Gordon, me, Clara, you, I mean, I'm not thinking Ricardo, right? Um, are we more uh, anti-American, less <laughs> anti-American? I mean, I don't know what the right thing is, but I, I thought I'd ask you. I should have asked Clara too. But... Okay, uh, that that's a very good question. And yeah, I, I was thinking about that too. Like, am I... Can I really say that I'm representing, um, you know, geographic area? And then actually, when you think about where I was trained, well, I think, yes, you're right that my training was in the U.S. and then I got to learn American anthropology. But the thing is, anthropology itself was, was foreign uh, uh, discipline for Korean scholars. So, of course, we had to learn American anthropology or British anthropology. But I think um, by applying the theories to Korean society or maybe from Korean perspective to other societies, I found it um, something that, that I you know, can bring that's different from American scholars. It's not about better or worse or something, but if, for example, when I uh, you know, studied Guatemala and the indigenous people, my perspective was different from American scholars. And I think it was a really great uh, chance to have like conversation with American scholars. And then they also got to learn from me and I got to learn from them. So I think the training in the US itself is not, uh, uh, kind of an, an obstacle in order to get, uh, you know, people or issues involved in um, WCAA or organizing committee for that matter. I don't know if I answered correctly, or maybe I just talked about only discipline issue. <laughs> Well, there is an interesting significant difference that out of East Asia, probably a higher percentage of scholars have been educated overseas than might be the case in some other societies, for, for example, in, in many European societies. That's, that's just a, an anthropological fact for better or worse. But uh, yeah, yeah. Any other questions? Nope. Okay. Well, then, uh, Gang Chen, Jin Suk, you're on. Uh, Gang Chen, James, you're on.
Uh, James, I should probably introduce you briefly and talk a little bit about your background. You were actually, I just realized from going over the notes here, the, um, the, the person who facilitated the application for membership of the uh, Chinese Anthropological Society, and you did that in 2013. Uh, so you were the first delegate coming in. I know you better as a participant of the WCA Task Force Making Anthropology Global. Your day job, so to speak, has been at the uh, Yunnan University of Finance and Economics in Kunming in China for the last 15 or so years. Okay, it's yours. Speak up. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks, Gordon, for the introduction. Uh, I'm also anthropology from China, anthropologist from China, but I'm also trained in USA. I got my MA from Iowa State University and PhD from the Ohio State University. But though trained in USA, but much, much of my anthropological career has been devoted to the study of ethnic peoples in Southwest China. So in, nine, in 2007, I founded the Center for Social and Eco Economic Behavior Studies at Yunnan University of Finance Economics in China. So with a goal to promote anthropology at an economic school and to preserve traditional eth ethnic cultures in the process of modern modernization and globalization. So far, so about over about from 2007 to today, I have written or edited over 20 books, over 60 journal articles in those areas in the study of ethnic peoples in Southwest China. Besides, well, besides this, I have I have been trying hard, trying hard to promote anthropology, especially applied anthropology in China, and to connect. Uh, Chinese anthropology and the world anthropology. As God mentioned, I have a, I have been China dedicate at uh, WCAA since 2013. And, and I'm also the China dedicate at East Asian Anthropological Association since uh, 2011. And uh, this year, I've been elected as a deputy chair of IUAS Commission of Enterprise Anthropology. So, uh, I'm also the chief editor of an uh, international journal of business anthropology, published in English uh, by North American Business Press. So, these, with all those, my job is to promote anthropology in China. My first contact with WCAA was, was in 2013, when I helped Chinese Anthropological Society to apply for WCAA membership. So that's 2013. Since then, I've been the delegate of the, the Chinese Anthropological, Anthropological Society at WCAA, serving as a bridge to connect the two organizations. So far, I have witnessed the success, successful development of WCAA in the last 10 years into an organization that now includes the large majority of anthropological associations in the world. I have actively participated in WCAA events and programs. Uh, yeah, I've been, for example, I've been a member of WCAA task force uh, making Anthropology Global, uh, sponsored or organized by Gordon. So far, WCAA organization has organization committee has never had a member from China before, but despite the fact that China has a very large number of anthropologists today, working both in and out of academic world. Chinese anthropologists have made great contributions to the anthropological study of kinship, religion, and ritual, economics, or economic behaviors, or economics and culture, a social and cu cultural transformation, modernization, globalization, a preservation of heritages or material or non-material cultures, and many other areas of studying anthropology. 
So I think WCAA definitely needs active participation of Chinese anthropologists. So if I were elected as a member of the WCAA organize, organizing committee, I would work hard with the chair and other members of the committee and also representatives of anthropological associations from around the world to handle issues that the WCA is facing today. I will try my best to assist the existing and forthcoming task forces uh, to make a to make anthropology global, to make anthropology, anthropology public, and to make anthropologists enjoyable. Something Kara mentioned earlier. So now it is really to pop. Even in China, we, I mentioned about we have a large number of anthropologists, but anthropology as a discipline, in a lot of universities, a lot of uh, students, that's it's kind of new, they're still, not so popular as sociology. Uh, as we all know today, the whole world is changing really fast. But anthropology as the only discipline in the world that deal with the past, the present, and the future of humankind. is a high responsibility to make the world better. And I believe this is a lot of what goes, a lot of dreams, so many anthropologists. We want the world better. So I would be honored if I could serve as an organizational committee member, organizational committee member for the WCAA. That can bring anthropologists from all over the world to work for this common goal, that is to make the whole world better. That's what it's anthropology for, that's what I believe. And of course, while we are doing that, we, 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 we would uh, make anthropology a better discipline in the future. Uh, thank you. I think that's what I'm trying, going to say today. Okay, um, let me start off with a very blunt question to see how you'll answer. Mm -hmm. As you know, the IUAS conference in Kunming was canceled for a year because of Chinese government pressure. Um, what's it like? How much government pressure is it? And certainly some people might view you as a representative of the Chinese government. Now, I know you well, that's not fair, but how would you, how would you, are you an independent agent here? Speak up. Tell me what's your relation to the Chinese government. Sorry, that's too crude, but you get my idea. Well, 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 in China, you can never just, just walk by yourself. Uh, if you work for universities, it's government government universities such as the university I work for. But however, these days, these days, the government control over is has not as be has, has has everybody thought about it. So we still have some relatively some kind of a freedom in doing what we have been doing, especially uh, in in. What about cultures? What about modernization and globalization, culture change in all those areas? Today, China, as compared with, uh, well, I first started to teach in 1983. <laughs> 1983, that's over 40 years ago. So today, compared with 40 years ago, China is much, much more open. And uh, scholars or professors in China finds more and more uh, independence and choose what they what they want to study. This is as a comparison big progress, and you can see from a lot of publications by Chinese anthropologists, both in China or out of China, in international journals of anthropologists, you can see from you know they their studies that. Uh, you, you don't see much Chinese government influence in their studies. You, although, as I mentioned about government, government in China play a big role, right? 
but, yeah. but scholars have their every well, Chinese scholars have, have their traditions to try to be independent. And uh, you to talk about you mentioned about 2000, 2000 line the concert, but but these days I think these few in the past few years the government spon sponsored quite a lot, lot of uh, conferences. Well, when some sometimes we say ethnology, sometimes we call ethnology and anthropology. Put these two together, and uh, well, like a triple A, China today have has a, a kind of a anthropological and ethnological association. It's kind of a run. It's hard to say the semi what what I call semi independent. <laughs> But it did has a lot of uh, sections, like like a uh, triple A in USA. It's uh, like over thirty different kind of sections dealing different aspects in anthropology, physical anthropology, uh, applied anthropology, religion, etc. All those kind of aspects. So you can just see. Well, that. And you're absolutely right. There is all that diversity. I must say to everybody, I myself would be afraid to go into mainland China today because I might get thrown in jail. But having said that. You're certainly right. There is diversity and there is some independence of thinking uh, quite a bit, and you represent that. So I'm, I'm well aware of that. That's very true. Um, any other questions? We've lost faces here. Come back, people. But uh, any other questions? Virginia, you always have a question. Speak up. No, I guess not now. Who knows? Oh, we can't hear you. Turn on your mic. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I, I could, but I don't want to always be have it be you and me asking questions. <laughs> somebody else, speak up. <laughs> yes, how about somebody else? Andre, Antonio, you guys have any questions? Clara, Isaac? Okay, L let me ask. Uh, it's interesting that you're uh, especially interested in ethnic uh, aspects of anthropology, and it's uh, very close to our Russian uh, attitude towards what, what is anthropology and ethnology together because uh, from um, 18th century we start from this you know point that main uh, uh, main hero of our science is uh, people is a nation and this is still in our agenda what about uh, uh, but recently in uh, on the congress of uh, russian anthropologists and ethnologists we have heard from chinese representative that uh, ethnology and anthropology um, is the kind of uh, you uh, sciences uh, of uh, jurisprudence legal sciences is it so how you manage this to be legal and uh, at the same time, anthrop anthropological, ethnological. Okay, thank you for your questions. Uh, this has something to do with, with the history of Chinese anthropology. We know anthropology from is a is a discipline from the West. It was introduced into China uh, in the nineteen tens, last century by as kind of a discipline that can help to save China. Anyway, we know in, at that time, China had, a, had a difficult times. But, but in 1949, since Chinese government, uh, Chinese communist China came into power, they kind of follow Russian, at that time, Soviet model to build higher education. So anthropology kind of, a, push out of the university. Uh, ethnology was set up to replace anthropology. But, but then since 1980s, China opened up a lot of uh, US, a lot of uh, Western European anthropologists went to China either to do field work or to give lectures. And a lot of Chinese scholars, including me, went out of China to receive education or to receive training in anthropology. And most of us, uh, many of us returned to China late in the late, uh, let's say 1990s and 2000, 2000 in those, at the turn of the centuries. So now anthropology was kind of a revived, we say revived 
and we're still trying to do hard work <laughs> to promote, as I said, mission about to promote anthropology since it has been replaced by ethnology for a long time. And uh, China has kind of an education system, the Ministry of China, Ministry of Education China have a kind of a, uh, well, have kind of a criteria to, to do, to, to, to divide or to identify disciplines, they put or to classify disciplines. They, they put disciplines in different uh, uh, categories, Books. like a first class discipline, second class, second second class. So mm -hmm. anthropology and right now is still under second class. It's not the first class. The first class discipline is ethnology. That's they receive much more government support and uh, the more programs across universities in China. But now for this two, for these two disciplines kind of a, has a tendency to, to, be, to, to merge. <laughs> we don't know how long it will take, to, to, but, but still we, this, we too, as I mentioned about one of the largest association in China now is, is called Anthropology and Ethnology Research Associations. So you can say it tends to merge. And we often have conference together. So we have a lot of the well, well, just say we have a lot of things to share. But but uh, for well, I don't know political reasons, maybe it still takes time to, to have anthropology uh, as a first class discipline in, in universities in China. Thank you. Great topic. Interesting answer. Yeah, I, I didn't I didn't realize that myself. I appreciate that. Now, Isaac has put a message in the chat, but I think mm -hmm. we should wait until after everybody has spoken before we get into that. It's a message about what you think uh, the urgent issues that WCA needs to face. But I want uh, Chobani to talk first now because you've been waiting a long time. And Chobani, I think you represent a different generation than the rest of us as candidates. You represent a younger generation. So it's interesting seeing your uh, face and views here. Uh, just to introduce you very briefly, you're a senior lecturer at the Department of Anthropology and Development Studies at the University of Johannesburg, Auckland Park, and currently the president of Anthropology Southern Africa, and that's the basis upon which uh, uh, Jomani is running. Speak up, Jomani. Wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Prof. Gordon, and uh, welcome, uh, greetings to colleagues. I firstly want to start by apologizing for being a little bit late. I actually was sitting in front of my laptop, but I had made a big mistake in time uh, in time conversion. So I think if I join um, the WCAA, uh, one of the things I'll clearly have to look out for um, that my time conversion is correct. Um, it's absolutely true um, what Prof. Gordon has said. I'm a senior lecturer um, in the Department of Anthropology and Development Studies at the University of Johannesburg. Um, a lot of my research um, is really around childhoods and youth, um, and that's the area in which I teach um, at the most. My own research is really interested in the boyhood period, and also lately I've been writing a lot about trauma in education, just reflecting on my own experiences with um, our students at the University of Johannesburg who come from low-income backgrounds um, and often come with you know, um, quite a lot of trauma um, that they've experienced. So I've been thinking a lot about um, in my recent writings around creating more humanized, um, um, not just anthropology, but um, um, anthropology departments. Um, so as the prof has already said, my other head is I'm the president um, of Anthropology Southern Africa, which is the, I believe, I stand corrected, um, the largest association of anthropologists in the continent. Um, we host the largest conference um, and as of this year, actually, uh, our conference is in September, and I just learned a few weeks ago that it's actually going to be our biggest. So we haven't had the kind of response um, that we've had. I uh, have about probably 16 years of experience, both as a student um, and later on as a researcher and staff in anthropology. So a lot of my work, I, I assumed everyone would have probably read the blurb I like, so I don't want to repeat it. But a lot of my work and thinking in anthropology has really been um, in two strands. The first one is to really think deeply um, about its history, particularly the colonial and apartheid history in South Africa and large Southern Africa, because anthropology was critical um, um, in perpetuating the colonial project 
um, in the African continent. So there's a lot of tainting and reflections that I often have to do as a black person and a young black person in the discipline um, about its meaning in contemporary times. One of the things I hear the most when I speak to their friend, any other friend who's not even in the discipline, the first thing they will always say is that the discipline is racist. So that's one strand in which I think a lot about that history. Then the second one is around how do we rehumanize it? So a lot of my publications, like I said, particularly the scholarship of teaching and learning is around reflecting on, 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 on sort of approaches of rehumanizing the discipline. Um, so my major interest also, as, uh, as my other colleagues have also shared, is really around uh, making the discipline public. Um, and part of that doesn't mean hiding our history, but to really put ourselves at the forefront um, of public conversations, including our own um, self-interrogations. And then also I'm very aware um, of my age and that I'm often the youngest, um, sometimes the only black person in, in, in the rooms that I frequent in anthropology. So I'm also, I think a lot about what does it mean um, to occupy my positionality and how do I open up um, or contribute to opening up the discipline to voices um, and faces that we often don't see. So I shared a lot about some of the previous work I've done um, in various forms. The most recent one was, of course, the Gauteng Anthropology Group. And this links to, I was thinking about it when I was reading Prof um, Nyamongo's question, which is, um, so that we had started this group uh, about three years ago called the Gauteng Anthropology Group. And this group was really around that, you know, we have these five universities in Gauteng, but there's so little communication that takes place between us. Um, a lot of us are often pushed into these matrices by the university where we have to compete for number one or number two. And that whole group was really around sort of challenging that system and say, we have these five anthropology departments in, 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 in this province. How do we all collaborate? How do we share? How do we exchange knowledge and so on? So those links that I put up there was the time, the two years in which I was chairing the association. So one of the major things that I did is beyond, of course, conversations, but to really think about social media, um, drawing from YouTube, drawing from Twitter and Facebook to increase connection and collaboration amongst us. So a lot of these proposals of what I would like to contribute if elected um, are around continuing with this work. I found that a lot of us really want to connect um, beyond the annual conferences. We don't want to wait till the end of the year or every two years. Um, we want to know, you know, weekly or monthly what other people in other departments. So I've proposed a number of activities that I think I would love to, to, to include. A lot of them um, build on also not just the work I've done, but I've noticed from your social media as well that you've been having many of these conversations. So the first one for me was this idea of conversations with mentors. Um, so I think if we are to transform anthropology and particularly promote a more decolonial and inclusive discipline, it's really important that we start by talking to each other, which is ironically one of the things we often don't do, certainly in Southern Africa. And this idea behind this, this series of conversations with mentors is to really create, particularly for first generation students, um, an opportunity to really connect and to demystify the processes of becoming an anthropologist through conversation with seniors um, in, the in the discipline. And then I also imagined, you know, um, also like, again, as one of the youngest often, often times, is how do we also bring in more young people um, to know about um, the work the WCAA does. Um, and I thought about this sort of saloon style dialogues where almost young people can speak back um, to knowledge that's been produced um, by senior scholars and so on. And then of course, we all know colleagues that writing is still central to what we do as anthropologists. So I thought about various ways in which across you know, context, we can provide writing support, mentorship for, for younger scholars who want to emerge. Just wanna say that I just recently co-edited a, a special issue and over 60% of the contributors there um, were by uh, first time publishing authors. So it's something I know I, I have experience doing. I and then also get just... that. Could you try again? Sorry. Uh, that theory, um, I think I said a prompt that um, opened up the screen. And then the last one is also one of the things we often do in, in our associations and disciplines is to ignore our colleagues who work outside of, the, of, 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 of university settings. So one of the things I've really thought about is how do we also bring in our anthropology colleagues who might work for Facebook or Google um, to bring them into our conversations and so on. So the last sort of event that I thought about 
was um, um, engagement with anthropologists who don't work in traditional um, in traditional settings and so on. And I believe all of these, um, along with the work already that I, I know colleagues have already been doing, I think they can help us not just to make anthropology public, but to help us to connect um, across many different areas. But I'll stop there for now. Thank you. Okay, great. Well, thank you. And uh, questions? Now, now, I have a question for you. How do I pronounce your first name? Uh, it's Gobani. Gobani. Okay, that's simple enough. I see. That's the first and <laughs> most important Not question. Sure. I did about you before. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, questions? That was it? Okay. Can I ask something? Yeah. Please do. Uh, okay. Um, I, I, I think you're great. I hope you know that Helen is a very big fan. But uh, I, let me ask you something that I know you care about. You have addressed in some ways, but I want you to expand on this. Uh, when you say that, uh, I think a lot of people say to you, anthropology is racist. Uh, how do you answer? Because I think it is. I think it has been. I think there's a way in which I would, I would say it still is. But I don't know. What do you, what do you say? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and also, uh, that's so kind to hear um, about Ellen. I'm always intimidated by her, so I'm so happy to hear <laughs> things um, very highly of me. I don't have one answer that I give. I, if I'm being honest, it depends on the context, who it's coming from. So for instance, if it's coming from a student, in my department, there's only two Black South Africans. So it's very clear, you can't make a case that you know Black people are included when the students themselves um, see the discipline, but in terms of more a more scholarly answer, um, so I'm part of a um, a special issue for teaching anthropology um, that's going to come out in 2024, and in that special issue, I have an article um, that I've co-written with um, seven former students. Um, so we are trying to work around this notion, this method of collective memoir. Uh, to think about our own experiences um, in the discipline. And one of the ways in which the students actually started the abstract was with anthropology is racist um, and that it cannot be decolonized. But the way the article itself has actually enveloped, um, we, when we started to write our own memoirs and experiences in the discipline, we realized, I mean, in, in most in the most simplistic terms, there's both good and then there's both bad. There's a lot of good people across race and across context in Southern African anthropology, specifically in my context, who've done a lot of work um, in terms of this word that I love, the rehumanization mm -hmm. of the discipline. But of course, even in contemporary times, there's a lot of people in the discipline who are invested in it not changing, in it not transforming. So I always give that balance view that, you know, that there's a lot of people, really, really good people um, across all strat stratifications. And I'll often provide the work. But of course, I mean, um, certainly even my own experiences, I've experienced the kind of challenges, even in our own department of trying to transform it and make it more inclusive that we can't, we're not at a point where we can make the case that the discipline right now has in many ways um, undone its history. And actually one of the things that, so point number one of how I was gonna respond to Prof Isaac was the communication question of how we're not speaking to each other. But the second one, was around one of the major crises in the, this discipline. So many young people have said, we don't even want it decolonized, we want it destroyed. And part of that answers the question of that. There's, up, there's an absence from anthropologists of really wanting to engage reparative work of what our discipline, maybe not us individually, but certainly what the discipline has done in its historical context. Um, and so I think until we also engage that work of really thinking deeply about um, what does reparative scholarship, research, teaching, and all of those include, I think that that will always carry us. Um, so I'll stop there. It's it's two ways. I always say that I always give the good. The, I think I give the good, but I also give the room that I think is there uh, still needs a lot of improvement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now, if there's no other questions, I don't see anybody. Come on, raising... there might be. It might be anybody else because we have Isaac's on. question here. Um, yeah. I don't see anybody urgently raising their hand, but uh, Isaac does have a good question here. Uh, Isaac asks, to all the candidates, what are, in your view, three urgent issues that the WCA should address? And what Can proposals you hear me? do you propose? Yes, we hear you. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's key. Now, um, I need to, to be careful because uh, uh, several of you will be in the organizing committee. And unfortunately, a lot of what we have to deal with is already set. As Clara was saying, how we get along with IUAES, uh, there's a number of particular issues, task forces as opposed to commissions and so on. But still, Isaacs is a really good question. I don't want to focus on three, but for all three of you, um, Clara, you don't need to answer this because you've already been through all this, but for all three of you, what do you think is, is most urgent for uh, WCA to address? Uh, Jin Suk, you start. Um, well, very difficult question again. <laughs> well. I mean, I don't know if WCA can address and also solve the problem, but I think we are probably a lot of us are aware of anthropology kind of being, you know, recently more and more um, like less relevant to many um, big issues. Anthropology, like traditionally, um, has a you know uh, that addressed kind of important questions about racism, about indigenous people, about many, many issues, colonialism. But then I think from some time on, as we all know, um, kind of became like no longer anthropologist uh, issues anymore. And I think it somehow theoretically, methodologically, um, we're just all over the place, right? So I mean, sometimes good, but then other times like, well, where are we? What are we supposed to do? It's that I think it's everyone uh, got kind of confused. And on top of that, I think it has to do with probably changes in higher education and then a lot of anthropology department also is facing um, some crisis as well. So it's kind of crisis in discipline, but also crisis in you know, in terms of institutions, right? So I think in that, that is why an anthropologists are kind of uh, not making, an, you know, important contributions to um, solving problems or, you know, addressing important issues. But so I think uh, WCAA probably, I mean, we, for, of course, WCAA is not, you know, that powerful and it can do everything. But I think we, since it's not just one uh, country uh, organization, maybe we can kind of bring like, well, this is what we are all concerned about. So maybe we should have some, you know, we should organize some uh, webinars to address like things that we've been uh, ignoring or, or, or we've been um, kind of, Forgetting, maybe, because we're so busy dealing with many other issues. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Now, remember that we are linked to IUAS to create World Anthropological Union for the specific purpose of having one anthropological association. Yeah, I think a far... So, yeah, speak up. Clara, go ahead. I didn't know yeah, you were here. Yeah, but Gordon. Yeah. Gordon? Yes, I'm here. We're here. No, okay. Now, what I was going to say, just to add to what the colleague was yeah. saying, is that yeah, for instance, a webinar on is anthropology race. This would be a, would be very interesting. I think it would be a very interesting debate. Yeah, 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 yeah. Terrific. Let's do it. Great. Yeah, yeah. But I think uh, uh, the, the basic point that uh, Jinsuk was making is how can anthropology survive and have some influence in a world where some people would see us as increasingly irrelevant? Yeah, of course. That's that's essential. Uh, yeah. Anybody else? Uh, James, you go. You go ahead. Your time. Uh, all right. Uh, for me, you know, based based on my experience in China, one of the important issues is to make anthropology public. You know, for a lot, uh, I mentioned about earlier as uh, Antonio asked me the questions. <laughs> ethnology has replaced anthropology for a long time. So many, many, many. People know ethnology, but they don't know anthropology. Even today, if you go to a Chinese university, ask ask students about uh, what is anthropology, probably not many many can give you good answer. Probably many will say, "I don't know anthropology at all." If you say ethnology, that's we know ethnology is the study of ethnic 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 peoples. So this is we want to to make uh, so one of as I say, to make, to make anthropology public. For a long time, I think in 2000, 2019 or 18, 
Chinese anthropologists try to promote the publicity of anthropology by using newspapers or those kind. But well, that's still still a long way to go. So, so this is kind of a kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of, this is quite, this is really important. If no one know anthropology, you know, this kind of a threat in your the discipline. <laughs> so we need to make uh, anthropology as much public as possible. So this is, a, I think this is the first important. How to do that? Well, as mentioned about we, we, we use newspapers. Probably now we need to, to, to use one and more modern means of uh, trans communications. Yeah, sure. And we also need to, to show not just the common people, but other government too, what anthropology can do. You know, we can do a lot of things. We talk, mentioned about the study of racism, we mentioned about climate change, we mentioned about uh, even the war. So we need anthropology to make uh, you know, our voices heard. <laughs> So yeah, and I, for you, that's a that's a, a very interesting double question because part of it is making the Chinese public know, but part of it is making Chinese anthropology better known to the international world. Is is that part of what you're saying? Yeah, yeah this is part of this is also one one of my why I choose to become to become the chief editor of that journal. I try to to make a anthropology anthropology study by Chinese scholars. Uh, to be known by the by the by the by the other anthropologists in the world. So this is a as I say, this is this is kind of a kind of issue I think about is most most important. We need to think about some the smart ways to promote to promote, to promote anthropology. Is is uh, not just pro propaganda, but we we need to really to know anthropologists, not just those. <laughs> we can do real things. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, great, great. Giovanni? Hey, thank you. Um, <laughs> one of the things about going last is all your good points are often taken by then. Um, so I'll just respond to the third one since I've already hinted um, at the first two questions. Um, I absolutely agree with colleagues. So um, the last course that I taught was actually a course on theory, um, anthropological theory in, 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 in Africa. And one of the ways in which I opened it and one of the essays that the students had to do was this big debate that took place in the Journal, Journal of Contemporary African Studies. And it was between um, Professor Rose Boswell and, and Francis Nyamjo. And it was around the place of theory um, in, in African anthropology. And I think one of the things for me, one of the crises in the discipline, and it certainly came out in so many of the student responses, was this absence of knowledge translation. So a lot of the times we have a really good archive of really good a good body of work um, in anthropology, but we fail at communicating um, that scholarship um, in a way that translates, I guess, to praxis uh, from theory to practice in, in many different contexts. So one of the ways in which, and I think that's why I sort of propose also working with anthropologists outside of academic context is that it allows us to show the ways in which um, an anthropology can translate. So just in the past year, um, I was consulting for Netflix. Um, I'm actually in Durban now. I'm not in my home province because I'm doing some work for Population Services International, helping them to um, scale out um, a program targeted at um, men who have sex with men. Um, and there's so many other organizations I've worked for in the mining sector, banking, and so on. I tell my students all the time because I know the majority of our students don't want to become anthropologists. But I tell them there's so multiple, so many ways in which you can use your knowledge as, a, as an anthropologist. And I think one of the ways in which I would like to contribute to is that gap of really showing how we can translate um, our knowledge, not just in an academic context, um, but in ways that it resonates um, with the general public. And I think that's part of the ways in which also why I write a lot for public platforms. And I know in the academy, it's frowned upon. People see it as slow as, you know, lesser scholarship that is less rigorous. But I think it's important because the kind of responses I often get to a popular media um, article, which, you know, can have 10,000 views in one hour versus a peer reviewed article where you're lucky if, you know, 100 people are able to, to download are so significantly different. And I wanna try in my work, I'm not there yet, um, to really find that merger where we can still produce rigorous work, but to be able to share that work in ways it can be applied even outside of 
you know, small context of um, anthropological associations or departments and so on. So yeah, I, I, I will end there. Yeah, these are all great points and you're all saying rather similar things. Obviously that's the direction that we need to go into in the next several years. Terrific. Um, any, any final questions from any of you? Okay, it doesn't look like we have it. Now, my disappointment today is that there have been so few participants, but I think on a Sunday, it's hardly surprising. Uh, this will, though, be immediately publicized. And Ricardo, I, I think that ballots are going to be sent out immediately after this. And these, this recording will be put on uh, the, the WCA uh, website and Facebook. Is that right? We can't hear you. No. Yeah. It's going to be in a private YouTube link. Okay. So this is but, only for but guys. Guys, but I think I think it wasn't publicized enough to the delegates because I know APA didn't get it. So, uh, you know, perhaps a lot of people don't know. I think we need to publicize and, and really say, people, you need to vote. Otherwise, people will not know about this. And that's bad. Because they can look at this recording, but they need to be aware that they need to see it and they need to vote. Okay, Clara, so do you think we should make this recording public? I think it should go onto the website, of course. Okay, okay. Um, does any, yeah. I, I think all of you what, have said exemplary things. Does anybody object to that? No, come on. We're, we're running for a public uh, service, so to say, right? Yeah, okay, okay. Okay, so Ricardo, let's do that. I think we've made a decision here. Let's make it well, public. Let's go ahead we should that. have done it live uh, anyway. <laughs> yeah, and we probably should have, uh, because this was a fascinating discussion. I learned a lot from it, uh, and I'm, I'm really happy with all that you guys have said. And uh, I, I look forward to the coming couple of years with, with you here. But nonetheless, um, let's publicize this and proceed. Now, the ballots will be immediately sent out. Yeah, uh, let, let's, send, let's send some more mails. Uh, Gordon, we need to send some more mails to the delegates saying that this, was, this took place. It's recorded. They can watch it, and they can vote. They need to know that. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, Ricardo, if you could work with Michelle, I'm surprised Michelle is not here to convey that message. I'll do it tomorrow morning, but it's it's now midnight here, so I, I have to get to bed. But but please yeah, do that if yeah, you can. Yeah. Yeah. I... <laughs> yeah. Let's get this known okay. because we want the voting to take place within a week if we can. Yeah. And um, voting, yeah. I should say, for Clara's position, it requires 60% of all member associations. For the um, the organizing committee members, it's 50% of the majority vote. But nonetheless, we do need to have associations vote, and they shouldn't be voting unless they've seen this video. So let's let's proceed on right. this. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 We have to finish this meeting. For you guys in the East, it's midnight. Come on. It's well, really Jinsuk like, is now in the UK, so I thought it was latest. Oh, okay. and, and Gang Chen, yeah. you're close to midnight like me, James. So it's not that late, but you're right. We should finish here. And for all of you, it's been an hour and a half, but very interesting. Thank you for all of you for all the contributions you made. Um, great discussion. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Very thank much. you. Yeah. And have an, a thank nice end of weekend for everybody. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Good night, Good. everyone. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye bye. 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 Bye bye. Thank you.